Hello, everybody, and welcome to the House Salt Live Show for June. Uh, our book of the book of the month <laughs> was <laughs> uh, Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. My name is Marines. My channel is My Name Is Marines, and I gave this. I had a head to do a heavy pour of wine. That uh, is a heavy it. port. <laughs> that is a lot of wine. Yeah. Okay, one star for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm Sam from Thoughts on Tomes. Initially, when I read it, I gave it to you. I don't know why. I think it's going to get a one for me as well. I'm Connor from Connor O'Brien. Uh, I ended up giving this two stars when I finished. I think it'll probably stay, depending on how this conversation goes, <laughs> uh, honestly. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Paige from Minimal Bookie, and this is a solid two for me. It's a two. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jordan from the Jordan Journals, and I think on this reread, a two feels feels right. Solid. Yeah. So consensus. You, yes. Yeah. No, it's a, I think that this is a one star and a two. <laughs> very, very generous. I yeah. So I will try to argue you all down to a one by the end. <laughs> doubt the quality is a one but in my heart from nostalgia it's a two <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, but on that note uh, i'm curious uh because you know uh, you guys mentioned rereading so what was your experience with this book like prior to reading it for this book club like how far have you read in the series did you love it when you read it originally all of that jazz it was I like when no it was with this yeah, I read the first three books one time each. So, like, my memories of these, solidly from the movie. I've watched that multiple times. <laughs> That's what spelled it for me. But I did, like, it was one of the, like, series that I kind of liked when I read it, which is why I was curious about a reread of it, which is why I suggested it. So, yeah, the first three books. I'm with Sam. Girl. I have no history with these books. I watched the movie back when it came out, but that was it. Um, I read the first book in, like right at the beginning of my channel in 2015, and I think I gave it like a three, like a low three, and I didn't like it then. So I wasn't expecting to like it on this reread because my reading tastes have changed a little bit. Um, but for some reason, I kept reading it. So I read the second book, still hated it. Third book, I was like, okay, this is good. I'm enjoying this. And then I enjoyed the third book to the end of the series. Mm -hmm. I think I, I might have given one of them a five star in there somewhere. Wow. Bless your heart, Jordan. Yeah, so there's like a whole range of like two to five star in the series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the like nostalgia is very funny. I'm sure we'll get people in the chat um, talking about it too. Is like, I remember when it was like pretty big um, as like a series. Like a lot of people on BookTube had read it and would talk about it as like this sort of nostalgic series for them, but it wasn't like being read in the height of BookTube, but like before, like people, mm -hmm. it was like a before book. Um, I have it no was always of that movie included out. in like the book boyfriend stuff. Yes, like Which everyone talks about I found Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, everyone talked about that, and then people will always say, and they will say to this day because it's already a comment in here that everyone prefers a spinoff. Um, however, never in my life will I read like a six book series to get to the spinoff of a shitty vampire like <laughs> YA series. Like it's not fucking happening. So like I will say, and we'll get to this later, but I did continue to read. The second book after this because when i talked about the first book a bunch of people in my tiktok comments were like but it gets better you have to keep reading blah, blah, blah. and i you did and the second book is hot garbage guys so like that's you're the wrong. frostbitten one right <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yes. yeah it's i remember one gorgeous. thing from this series which we will ask about later one. guys <laughs> less happens less happens in mm -hmm. book two than book one which i don't even know how that's possible like i do i do yeah, not know how, a anyway resort so it's like cozy it's not <laughs> also, that is a dumb decision. So yeah, I have no, I had no recollection of this before reading um, this. But I, I tried to read it at some point several years ago, the first book, and I even was like going to do a live, a live tweet for it, and mm -hmm. I got less than a chapter in. I had notes going on my ebook copy so I could actually see. And then I actually looked up the live, like I started to live tweet it. I was like announcing it and everything. I got less than a chapter in and I was like, no. Uh, and I DNF'd. So, and I was happy to have it DNF'd for all of eternity um, <laughs> <laughs> until this. I will say that uh, I've never watched the movie but several weeks ago, whenever this was happening, my friend Jess came to visit me and we usually like watch TV together. And she's like, we have to watch Vampire Academy. So I watched the first like, like five episodes or whatnot that had aired up to that point in the Peacock show. Um, and that was, 
a time also mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but i never after she left oh, my house like i didn't keep watching it either uh and i think it was canceled eventually so like you know it doesn't matter anymore um but yeah i the nostalgia thing is really funny to me i was complaining about something in my discord i think it was either like the misogyny or uh complaining about i don't know the not like other girls in some something about this and like someone responded to me like remember rochelle mead wrote this in 2007 and i was like yeah rochelle mead should have been punched in 2007 <laughs> for writing it even then like i am right. sorry for your nostalgia but like even in by 2007 standards like this is not good to me so no there's something really like i mean i think this falls in the same camp as like the twilights and like all of that stuff where people are like but for its time and i'm like besties it wasn't the like 1800s like why are we <laughs> acting like like seven was like yes a lot of things were different however things can still be bad mm -hmm. in their time like you could have mm -hmm. just had bad taste because you were I a teenager. Like, that's okay, a lot I, I was like 2007 but i feel like part of that is like saying it was trash but it was 2007 trash it was like a familiar kind of trash where like that's what we were reading because all of it was the same because I was talking about like House of Night and like other books that had the exact same sure. problems and it was a, pu a problem with publishing overall at that time versus this one book specifically so when I said 2007 I was just was like I didn't expect anything else because of the time period it was in the books usually were pretty bad back then. The thing too though mm -hmm. is that like um the thing about it being 2007 is that like the bad books of 2023 are not that different like I would put the that's thing my problem it's like when yeah. it's bad now it's like you are like actively just like you are bad in a worse way to me if it's now because there's been so much education and stuff since then like I would put fourth up. wing and vampire academy same bucket same okay. <laughs> the same fucking thing. Same thing. <laughs> I, I, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I I understand at least like Rochelle Mead was paving the way for this like kind of bad uh, mm -hmm. fantasy. She was setting setting bad standards. <laughs> yes, setting bad standards. <laughs> yeah, I mean the domino effect of that. Imagine a timeline in which Rochelle Mead, Stephanie Meyer, those those books didn't get written, and then we'd be being like, remember two thousand seven when like things changed. And like well, books got so exponentially better, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Again, this like nostalgia for something. I just so wish, especially like when talking about it in the context of this series and a lot of series, it's like you can have nostalgia for it and it still be bad. Like people that are like, mm -hmm. no, my nostalgia, don't talk about it. I'm like, it's still bad, bestie. I'm sorry. <laughs> like that's fine. I'm also pretty sure Rochelle Mee's a romance writer. So like, is she? I've no, never read anything besides those first three books. I think she's an adult, has an adult See, romance. I, I'll look writing. it up while we're has talking. Anyone, has anyone read anything else by Rochelle Mead? No? That I've other, read The, the other book. Court. The what? I read that one, yes. Court. Yeah. It was also bad. And then she wrote one that was like a, what was it called? Silence. Soundless the one, or something? Soundless, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. where it was Soundless like an Asian-based Asian fantasy that yeah. everyone hated. <laughs> and I, I Everyone at the it. time was reading because they were like, oh my god, it's like, it's, you know, marginalized character. It's like written by a white woman. Like, what, Yes, but it was in doing? the time of like everybody writing these Asian-inspired fantasies. Like, yes. Uh, uh, like the Lunar, Lunar Chronicles? Chronicles? Yeah, Lunar Chronicles. Jake Kristoff was out there just being anti-Asian all over way. the place. Yeah. Yep. Uh, then mm -hmm. Rochelle Mead was like, ooh, ooh, me too. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yes. Okay. We're, <laughs> let's actually get into talking about the book. Sure. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> laid the groundwork there for our many feelings um and for like jordan and Paige, I'd, i'm curious as we talk about it like i don't know the the like experience of reading it now with your now taste but also like i don't know if you can thinking about like what teen you would have liked about it too or i don't know if you were teen there but whatever yeah Age. so the teen me i can definitely say what it was that i liked about it one that the character like the way I rereading it now seeing the way she is like the sexuality of it is so cheesy but as mm -hmm. a teenager it was one of the first times especially after reading Twilight which is like so heavily like sterilized for a reason because of the perspective reading that felt refreshing to me I was like oh my god she's like taking charge of her sexuality as a 16 year old me of obviously mm -hmm. but I think that was like the main reason where it felt like she was different from other protagonists I had been reading at the time very not like other girls now <laughs> but when I was 15 I was years about old to, like, I was like was yes not like bestie other girls. <laughs> yeah well that's I what I also like I think I read this when I was in my early 20s yeah I was early 20s, and yeah. I think I was like 
23-ish. And I remember thinking like, wow, Rose is so different. Like she's kind of abrasive and she makes all these really bad decisions. And like, look at her go out there and not be like everybody else. But now... Yeah. yeah, I feel like we were used <laughs> to reading from the perspective of like the princess girly in the stories. And then finally, we were getting like the other side. I was like, oh, this is like fun, interesting, new. She's not like Bella. Like things aren't just happening to her. She's actually being dumb herself. Yes. I feel like, uh, I mean, most girls, I'm not going to say all girls, but most of us go through our own not like other girls phase mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. on our yeah. on our, our feminism journey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I can see that part of it, like ringing true for people is like finding a not like other girls character that you like relate to. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll start actually with Rose as a character because her she is the single point of view character, which I have an issue with from like a structural standpoint. Um, but I want to start with how much I freaking hated being in Rose's head and how (laughs) awful she was to me as a character. Like I literally at one point was rooting, I sent to my discord, I was like, I want the Strigoi or whatever, the evil vampire. I want them to to, like somebody find this woman and just get, I mean this teen and get her like away from me because I found her insufferable. Mm -hmm. How did you guys find her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she from the get go, she's the worst, right? Like, I don't know, like, one of the first, I don't want to, like, the second book to bleed too much into things, too, because she continues to be awful in that book. Um, but from the, like, her introduction even is just so how I'm not like other girls. And, like, I party, but, like, I don't sleep around, but, like, I flirt, you know? And you're just like, I can't fucking stand you. Like, you are, because she is the embodiment of the not like other girls time period. So, like, I get that it is from like that. And, and like, a teen would be like, cute. Um, but you're just like, as an adult, as a, like, a woman, a full woman in my 30s reading it, I'm being like, you uh, sit down. Like, I can't handle it. And just it's an example of one of those books where you're like, where are the adults? And they are so not present. And like, the things that the adults are doing set her up to look like like it, the book is trying to make it seem like she's smart but she's still obviously not and so you're mm-hmm. like not only is everyone around you so incompetent to try to lift you up more but you're still the worst um also the audiobook narration is like god oh the audiobook let's not even discuss that <laughs> it was no we are Alyssa as a character is <laughs> absolutely ruined because in that being mm-hmm. nice and you did and yes. I was gonna like punch her in the face too. Yes. Um, oh my god. Uh, Rose, I think it was in like she was kind of an in an interesting conundrum because at first I was like, oh, she's like highly capable, like she's one of those characters, right? The super special best um person ever. But then she gets back to school and actually she's not good at anything. She's behind everyone, but also people keep treating her like she's the best at everything and like yeah. she's the super special one even though like everyone keeps beating her up or whatever so like I don't know the story kind of wanted to have it both ways that Mm -hmm. she was like behind but also she was super special and then it was like well she protected Lissa all of this time but also like they were attacked once or maybe like mostly they were lucky but so it was just like a weird characterization for me from Rose uh she's like being hateful not like other girls mean mean spirited mm-hmm. yes, uh, and terrible yes. generally that was something that really bothered me about it the first time i read it is i really couldn't stand all of like the cattiness like heightened high school drama that was happening because i felt like it was like a weird contrast to like all of the other stuff that was going on in the book um but i lost my train of thought of what i was saying oh Rose is like special by proxy. She's only special because Lissa is special. And that's mm-hmm. like how she is. People like her think she's cool or whatever. You like have to tolerate her. <laughs> yeah, because Lissa is bit. this princess. And they try to like add to this. I'm just going to talk about the second book too a little bit because I feel like it's relevant. So like her mom is super <laughs> like an important sort of damp here. They mentioned it a little bit in book one. And even like in the second book, like Rose mouths off to her mom so much who's like actually a competent warrior and she's like you know she said the first book how she's like I um you know I don't want to have kids and I just want to be a whatever well her mom like had a baby and then went and was like a guardian or whatever and she's like how dare you and it's like can you pick a side please like I get having conflicting feelings too but like just like all of the things that she does are just like completely contradictory like where she will be like yeah I I'm doing you know i did this and i was i knew what i was doing blah 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 blah. and she'll have moments even where she'll be like oh oops i didn't and you're like 
we love a self-aware queen. <laughs> Great. But yeah, she's she's highly insufferable. And like the the I, I get that teenagers flirt a lot, um, but like the sheer amount of like every man she talks to, where you're just like, I get it. But also like, do we have to have everyone be obsessed with her? Like it's very much giving like Sarah Jamas, like all my characters are suddenly beautiful and everyone is in love with them. It's like mm-hmm. I get it. It was her, you know, like special parent lineage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That Mari described in the group chat. I don't remember exactly what it said, but yes, I was like, I, I was, I saw in the chat someone talking about like her being hypersexualized and being mm-hmm. rejected by women was like something they related to as a, a black teen. Uh, to me, reading it like now as a black woman, it was incredibly uncomfortable to me to read her descriptions of herself. She calls calls herself exotic. She calls herself a desert princess. She describes her skin as the inside of an almond. Um, she talks about like part of her not like other girlsing is that like all of the Moroi are for some reason like naturally thin, but she's got big boobs and hips. So she's always like, oh, my boobs and my hips. I'm not like other girls. Uh, and it, in a way that is all like hypersexualized, but in a weird way, if you're also going to keep calling her like exotic and risque, she calls herself like sexy in a risque way because she mm-hmm. has boobs and I was just like, this is too much. Uh, this is too much for me. And then uh, the, there's like a moment where she talks about like all of the guardian women get ugly. Mm-hmm. And she's like mm-hmm. so afraid of being ugly. And Dimitri's like, no, you will never That won't happen to you. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. It's not even just that they're ugly. It's because they cut their hair. And then so, like, it's not I'm like it's because they have short hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're mm-hmm. so women are like so ugly when they cut their hair short, and she's yeah. never gonna and cut her like, hair. All of the other guardian women are leathery, yeah. <laughs> and they, they cut their hair, Ugh. and then she's like, I'll never cut my hair. And I'm like, Bessie, you're the only woman ever who never wanted to cut her hair. Mm-hmm. Of course, she is because she's not like other girls, exactly. So it's like every <laughs> single thing about her and how she thought about herself was set up that way. And I just, I know she's a teen, but still. <laughs> I wanted to punch her a little bit. Uh, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> I had no strong feelings toward her. I was like, mm. this is exactly who I remembered. No strong <laughs> feelings? Yep. No, I had yeah, no just... strong feelings about this book overall because I've read it before. So I was like, this is exactly what I remembered. Yep. <laughs> yep. I just I, just a I general honestly didn't even have to finish reading it because every, as I read it, I got like halfway through it and I'm like, I remember the whole book. I don't even need to finish reading it. The <laughs> whole thing happened. came flooding back to me. Two things happen in this book, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I got, like, halfway through, and I was like. <laughs> Connor, you were saying? I Yeah, I just had a general unpleasantness, like, being with her on this mm-hmm. journey. Um, and also, like, the the inside of an almond thing. Aren't almonds white on the inside? Yes! So <laughs> why do you have to do that? Like, like, that was so weird. <laughs> Weird. The description. She's like, I'm so. Like, does she mean like toasted almond? Like, I'm not. Know. She's like, I'm so exotic. Like the inside of an almond. And I was like, Bestie White. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well her, isn't her mom like Scottish or something? I think she was trying to play like she's, on the. She's half Turkish. Half Turkish. Yeah, I think that's her dad. Turkish. And but her, her mom, mom like, she because she makes a comment like, "I wish I had the red hair," but whatever. Oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the other half here uh, is Lissa, the princess. Do you guys, I mean, have any feelings about her? We already talked about the baby voice and the <laughs> audiobook narration. The, the audiobook think, really yeah. makes it bad. Like, yeah. I, I think yeah. she's probably less insufferable a little bit because she's not, like, she's nothing. She's bland. Like, she's just mm-hmm. there to be something that Rose can protect and whatever. Like, doesn't mm-hmm. have much of a personality. Like, she even says when they were there before that she just sort of, like, was kind of blending in with, like, sort of vampire society, and she had that boyfriend that she didn't really like, and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so the most interesting thing about her, which I am loath to say, is when she, her and, like, Christian were sort of hanging out, and, like, her attraction to the bad boy. I'm like, girl, I get it. But, like, otherwise, she's nothing. Like, there's there's a blank slate there. Mm-hmm. She's just there for Rose. Yep, exactly. The silence There's no other point for itself. <laughs> I feel like to also, I, I wonder if there was any self-awareness there with Rochelle Mead about like, I'm writing about girls supporting girls. When like, Rose is going to be a bitch to every other woman that's in the like series. Mm-hmm. So she's like, but look, Lissa, she's nice. She can't be actually like internalized misogynistic 
because Lissa's her best friend and Lissa's a girl, mm-hmm. you know, like it sort of felt like that. I guess one thing with her that was interesting was that like she could not help but use her like extreme ability to I don't know influence people. She's so so her like her right. like so that's her one downfall. Well, I mean, <laughs> it was interesting because yeah. that was the only interesting thing kind of that I found about her was that she kind of could become a crazy person. I mean, it's a bummer Imagine. because she has the most interesting powers, right? Of like, she's mm-hmm. this person that has this like spirit ability where she could like, you know, you could basically like a necromancer. Like, that's cool. Yeah. I can hang with necromancy. But like, it's like, but you can't do anything with it because then you will turn crazy. Mm-hmm. And like yeah. all of the stuff about like, oh, well, then you want to turn into a Strigoi eventually. Like the whole, the, the Strigoi thing, mm-hmm. we'll get to that. Like all of that, nonsensical. But like, she t- potentially has the power to be like, having cool abilities because they're rare i had no idea that any self-harm stuff would be in this so when it came up i mm-hmm. literally had like a like a shock moment of like what like absolutely never heard anybody talk about that not, i mean in my memory i'm not saying nobody has but it was a shock to me and i really deeply disliked the way that mental health stuff was like mm-hmm. portrayed in here and how deeply tied that was to magic and like that sense of like if she uses her power she could go crazy because it doesn't acknowledge that people just have depression ah. rochelle yeah. people yeah. just ah. self harm oh, yeah. like <laughs> it's just like sense. yes yeah. so like the way that it was positioned and the way it was talked about wasn't super great to me uh mm-hmm. and so lissa who was like kind of a nothing character made worse by the audiobook narration then had that thing placed on top of her that i was like okay okay i don't like this either so mm-hmm. <laughs> cool <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm sure it was it, probably it, never mentioned because at the time the book came out it would have been like a spoiler it right, was in that yeah. time where, mm-hmm. like, that kind of stuff would be, like, spoiling the book for people. Yeah, that was also um, the, during the time yeah. when, like, if a character was gay but came out in the book, that was also a spoiler. A spoiler, oh, yeah. Right. But the way people talked about it. They're, like, I, again, connecting that into, like, book two. Like, by the end of this book, they're like, well, we're getting her on medication and blah, blah, blah. And even in book two, it sort of continues into this, like, where she's like, what if I don't want to be on my meds? And, like, but the meds suppress her magic and blah, blah, blah. Like, it just, th- so that, like, bad mental illness stuff just continues yeah yeah i completely Wonderful. forgot that was even part of the book entirely until i was reading it again i was like oh yep. something i did not catch when i was a teenager realizing yes. how badly portrayed mental health was right yeah well because that also again common for the time but didn't happen mm. right like so yeah yeah the other thing that i really didn't like about lissa and rose uh which kind of ties into just sort of like a craft thing for me was that i totally get that their psychic connection is like a thing and i don't object to it being a thing but i felt that the use of her jumping into her head was like Mm. a weird like plot device sort of thing where instead of making it dual narration so we could get lissa's part of it it would just be like no just jump into her head and like (laughs) jump into her head and show us a scene and then be like okay bye bestie Um, and then it had that i like i didn't like it from a craft perspective and then it had the weird sort of a side effect of being like this constant um uh like um i don't know like um, problematic thing for their friendship the way that rose just kept like infringing on her privacy and jumping into her head and like not even saying or doing anything about it just being like oh i know all your secrets bye uh so mm-hmm. I, it messed their friendship up a little bit mm-hmm. for me because of that dynamic mm-hmm. it's like a very cheap plot device yes it's yeah. like when people use like um falling asleep and still hearing everything yeah or <laughs> like oh i saw like I know rick ryder does it a lot with like portals or like being able to like view into other things that are going on with characters and it's like well then you could have we only got that because you inserted this plot device for us to see it yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. didn't love that yeah um okay we can move on to the main male character no i so don't want to the way that i did not know that it was like a seven year age gap because when people were talking about this i was like what it's probably gonna be like two right no and then when i was like it's been problematic (laughs) so many people are like yes this is one of my otps and And it even addresses it in the book where he's like i can't blah 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 whatever and it's like Okay, but as much as you resist it, you're still going to be a groomer if you get with her, which you do. 
later on. Like I, bleh, and and it continues to be awful in book two because he has like a age appropriate love interest that Rose shits on like the entire fucking time and hates just because of like obviously having a crush on Dimitri. Like it's insufferable. I'm like, and also it's aided by the fact that she like has age appropriate men around her that are interested. But it's always just like, but I only see them as a friend, whatever. But it's like, Bestie, I know that's a big school in Montana with all these people that are probably beautiful because that's how, like, YA books are. Like, you don't – no, you don't need it. Also, not he's done not an interesting thing from the get-go. Like, no, he just automatically no. was like, was like, yeah, I think Rose is competent. And you're like, why do you think that? <laughs> exactly. And, like, that's, that's their connection. Like, otherwise, the man has no personality. This it's whole- that – so quintessential middle 2000s teacher yeah. romance. <laughs> I so Rose, Rose. Okay, so it's a seven year age gap. Rose is 17. Yes. Not even an adult. He's nope. her mentor, technically a teacher at this school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the interactions between like he calls her like he's it's like she calls him grandpa and she ca- and he calls her a child. So there is like purposeful highlighting of the age gap between them. He slut shames her from here to kingdom come. Mm-hmm. At one point, he calls her a slut, essentially, based on the gossip that he heard from the other teens. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I've heard about you, you slut. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, oh, my God, save me. Save me uh-huh. from this. I, mm-hmm. I was physically in pain because of this. Yes. And there were so many things that were, it was like quintessentially what I thought when I was in high school that I was mature. And like that experience mm-hmm. of thinking mm-hmm. that you're mature enough for the older man and like everybody else just doesn't know because that was captured by these characters. And the fact mm-hmm. that it was written by a grown ass adult and marketed to teens like bothers me on like a spiritual level because Mm -hmm. there was even like they make out here under the influence. So that's like kind of the only thing that happens, but we're like paving the way for them to be like, well, you get me because they had that whole conversation about how like Dimitri is the only one who understands her and understands what it's like to face the things of life that she has faced. And and that's like one one I'm so mature so I can date an older guy. And I was like literally gagging reading this. So yeah. I had a terrible time with this. I never, <laughs> yeah, even reading it the first time, I never liked her with Dimitri. I liked her with the best yeah. friend. And there is something there that happens, I'm pretty sure, later on. Right, Jordan? Like there's, I know there's Adrian. I, yeah. But there's like yeah. another, like I feel like there was hinting at it, or at least the first three I read, there was always hints that that would happen. I was always hoping that would happen because the Dimitri thing, even as like a younger person, I was like, why are you interested yeah, in Yeah, I didn't old really guy? care for him even. Yeah, no. We didn't Adrian get it. also older? I don't remember. I think Adrian gets introduced in the second book, and I think, I think he, he's but, also like 21 or 22. Like oh it just God. happened, I'm pretty sure. So it's I like, don't remember. he's a little I don't bit younger. Remember his age. Much. <laughs> I don't remember his age. Maybe like 20, but still, no, it's like I shipped her with 20 the bestie, and 17. The guy that's okay. like the blonde, the redhead Mason. in the movie. Mason. 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 I shipped her with Mason. That was I, fuck me, I feel so bad for Mason. I uh, feel bad for Mason. He <laughs> uses him up, down, and right. And like oh, part yeah. of the drinking game is that every time Mason shows up and she's like, God, he likes me so much. You just take a take a little chug mm-hmm. uh-huh mm-hmm. and she's like i wish i liked him but i don't and like it just yeah that was rough yeah. it gets worse too like the dimitri i i i'm from what i remember it like gets worse like, I, mean, I just remember too. like towards but, the end of the book like after they had like the the like forced kiss or whatever happened she's like well why would why would he kiss me like blah 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 blah. and then she like confronts him and he's like yeah i think you're attractive and i was like (laughs) (laughs) yes Yes. you find a child attractive Mm -hmm. like the book tries to be like where it's like look he's like he's being good because he's like no we can't and whatever but like there's still all this other behavior and it's it's so interesting i mean i have the same reaction as mari where like i've also now talked to girls who are even like in their 20s and maybe someone in their like 30s is interested in them and people can have all the different reactions they want this is so much worse because this is a teenager and still having the same like thoughts like those young 20 year olds being like it totally makes sense that a man over 35 is into me and you're like bitch no it doesn't Mm -hmm. like i am sorry yes you're no longer a child but like when you get to 35 you're gonna go fucking gross man because i also used to date dudes who were like 10 years older than me so like 
from listen to mother like please so it, it was one of those instances of just like yeah you're seeing this thing and it's like a real problem that like uh, again with the older men grooming young girls all the time in real life to like see it in this is just like again gross this is one of those instances too that again we can argue back and forth all day long about how much impact media has on society and like who everybody wants to think it's like the same phenomenon as like advertising doesn't work on me uh which is what everybody thinks but advertising works on everyone and everybody thinks well i know um like fiction from reality and like these things don't impact me but the truth of the matter is that like media's impact on society is real and there is something to say for the way that these kind of age gap romances are normalized in media so that we all grow up not all most women i will say grow up with this idea that we are mature enough for older men Mm -hmm. We are socialized to believe that that is not creepy and we are the exception. Mm -hmm. And so if this is the media that you're consuming from Twilight to Vampire Academy, where it's shown as attractive and desirable, like I have a huge issue with that. I have a yep. huge issue with that. And it was so freaking uncomfortable to read that honestly, I'm happy for all of you and your two stars. But based on that alone, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could never. I will say all of you. I gave it one at the end. So I'm, not, I'm with you. Like, I'm not included in the two star. <laughs> Um, there was another love interest guy, Christian, and that was Lissa's guy. He's like the shadowy mm -hmm. bad boy. He's the only one that I like liked in because he seemed just sort of like a like I don't know anti establishment or something. Mm -hmm. Like he's like he's like fuck all this. They all hate me because my parents turned into like evil vampires, which is also like the whole thing about. I know we're gonna get to world building, but the whole thing about Stragoy and like Morai intentionally turning into Stragoy. No, that makes no sense whatsoever why they would do it. Like, so this whole thing anyway is like very convoluted and weird. Um, but yeah, him is like the ostracized bad boy. I'm okay with, I, I like him. Like, yeah. I like, like him too. Him when I read the yeah. list, like, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. He set someone on fire. Go off King. Like I, <laughs> I love it. Like, you know? He didn't hurt them. The, the fire didn't hurt the kid. No, he, it, it, it was, he was, it like, scared, I, yeah. it was under control. And honestly, I wanted to set things on fire at that point. <laughs> so I was like, yes, King, yeah. burn it down. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't like super, I didn't find the Lissa, maybe it was because I didn't like Lissa. I didn't find like the relationship to be anything like special. And it did happen sort of quickly where they're just like, I don't know, hanging out in the shadows. But that might also be because we're not with Lissa. We see them together yeah. one time through Rose's mm -hmm. point of view of head hopping or whatnot. Um, but yes, of all of the characters, I found Christian probably the best one. Um, and I also really liked that like, you know, Rose lies to him because she's the freaking worst. And yeah, she's like, bad friend. She, she's the worst person and um she like says all this mean stuff to him and he's just like obviously he's hurt but he's like whatever like fuck you guys and he goes away until like they come so i really appreciated that he was like you know like screw you guys i don't need you i'm gonna go be over here with my shadows and my fire and <laughs> <laughs> so i was like yeah i i, I do like that kid mm -hmm. That was the one star right there, which was Christian by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, no stars. No zero. zero. <laughs> uh, any other characters? I guess the the one character for me, which is kind of a character thing, but more of like I don't know, more of a plot silliness kind of thing, was the villain of this all. Okay, the, yeah, like, yeah. Natalie, the cousin's like uh, father, so. Mm -hmm. So father. obvious. Yes. So, so obvious. Abundantly obvious. Like, yeah. way to just, like, I mean, again, so of the time. But I did not see the twist of, like, the niece or, or like, his daughter, mm -hmm. like, becoming a Strigoi or whatever. Like, yeah, that so I didn't really see Out of nowhere. In. You're just, right. you, like, the, the whole like, thing wraps up, and then out of nowhere, she's like, I'm a Strigoi! And she yes. <laughs> yes. Makes no sense. But, like, him as the sickly kind one, I'm like, yeah. And even, like, again, I didn't finish book two, I DNF'd it, but I'm like, I know exactly who the villains are going to be in. Like, it's so abundantly clear mm -hmm. because it's just, like, foreshadowing subtlety, who is she? Not with Rochelle Mead. <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking, too, like, Natalie grew up her entire life being told that these Strigoi's are, like, the worst thing they could possibly happen to them, and then her dad asks her to do it, like, one time, and she's like, okay. Sure, yeah. dad. More than mm -hmm. happy to. I would love it. <laughs> yes. And then You're dies, like, a page later. The thing that had me absolutely <laughs> floored, rolling, dying, uh, was that he cursed the necklace 
to, in, with lust? He yeah. Was like, I need a way to distract them. I know. I'll let them have sex. What, what was that yeah. your plan? You can <laughs> compel this woman to do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything. You can compel her. And you're like, oh, I know. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> uh -huh. That was your evil master plan, and mm -hmm. then he like just shares that he has two sort of like info dumps villain monologues. So because we get one when at the kidnapping and then in the jail, and it's just so much info dumping and setting up the the second book. And when he's like, "Ah, oh, yes, I had watched you and I saw how much you liked that man," I was like, "Please no, a yeah. grown up adult is not doing this and saying this right uh -uh. now. I can't believe uh -uh. it." Uh, yes. But it was serious. It was real. Right. Well, because it's all set up. Obviously, we know this. Where it's like, yeah, sh she has to learn that there was a seed there of truth, and that's how. Yeah. Blah, blah 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 blah. You know, to just set up the romance of like, oh, they had to make out. Like, that's all. And so, yeah, when you have a villain who is so incompetent and also just like nonsensical like that, where it's just like their actions are just plot devices and like not at all compelling or interesting or realistic. Yeah, it's just like, okay, that I guess could have had potential in someone else's hands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else or any other characters that you want to mention? What about the weird teacher that turned Strigoi? She had the same. I forgot yeah. that Claire, what's her face from The Crown, plays her in the movie until I was watching it today and I was like, that was a choice of her for her. I acting. just kept picturing Trelawney in my head. Same. same. <laughs> that <laughs> is exactly. Who it was coded to be one hundred. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But like that's where we get introduced the idea of like people will again have like mental health issues because of their powers and want to turn into Strigoi, which I guess was maybe a substitute for suicide. There's like I don't whole, know. There's a whole thing about the Strigoi later on in the series. Spoiler: where they're not as evil as everyone makes them out to be. They're actually like they have more control over themselves than they were led to believe in the first couple of books, which is when I stopped. And I don't know why, like, I know why I stopped. I wasn't interested anymore. But that was uh -huh. the point I got to in the series was when they were like, big surprise, the Shigoy aren't evil, actually. Well, yeah, because the whole, like, ideas. the world building of, which, again, makes sense. But, like, if you're going to have the first handful of books, just be like, hey, mm -hmm. we have these damn here. Like, I love a half vampire half. Like, Blade, love it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Um, and then you have the Moroi as like living vampires, and then the Strigoi are dead. Va like it's a, it's one of those like why would anyone ever become a Strigoi? Like because they have a lot of people becoming them un like intentionally, which again they live sense. forever, they don't ever die. Ish, I mean because they still can in the same way. I mean again, are there more? And there's like the like power like and all of that. The Moroi die. They age. The Moroi die. die. They yeah. age normally. Yes. Yeah. The Shigoi are like the classic vampire where like they don't age, they need the blood, they can't go in the light at all. Okay, well I guess go off. Like that. That mm -hmm. But like Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like, the way that the narrative builds it to be like, why would anyone ever want to mm -hmm. be this? It's also um you live forever. It like the whole thing, all of the to me, um, sort of lore was oh. a little messy and confused. Uh like for instance, um, I don't understand really why the Dampir are protecting the Maroi when the Maroi have special powers. There's no reason. Uh -huh. <laughs> there is no they, reason. The Maroi <laughs> used to battle and like fight with their powers and like do things. And then at some point they just stopped. Yes. And there's like not really a reason as to why they just stopped. No. And, and then, then they, like have they try to make it like, well, they were, they were, they were, there's less of them. Right. So it's like, the dampiers like that the pawns yeah like there's less moroi so like they have to sort of conserve the, the explanation that i was getting was like mm -hmm. they have to conserve their their ranks because they're so few and the strigoi go after them so the dampiers are more like they're you know foot soldiers mm -hmm. to just and they're the ones that like control the courts and become the queens and yeah and what's the yeah. thing so like there were like some of them can't have children or something like that Dampir like two, and Dampir two of the, two of the ones that are living. She compared herself to a mule. <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah, I remember reading that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Wonderful. I understood that, like, at one point, I understood that the Dampir are half Moroi, half human. Mm -hmm. But then, but then, have kids together. They can also have Dampir Moroi. Can to continue Dampirs. So like yeah. a, a Maroi with anything else but a Maroi, I guess, becomes a Dampier. But a Dampier, Dampier can't have babies. Yeah. But Maroi no, and Maroi. Rose called have. herself like a half a Dampier. 
Is that right? Yeah, because her dad is a Moroi. So her mom's Dampier, her dad's Moroi. Okay. Okay. Which is how most of them are. <laughs> Which is how most of them are. Like the Moroi will yeah. sleep with the Dampiers and they'll have kids that way. Okay. The Moroi men specifically. The Mo- yes, right. specifically. That is a whole, we are not unpacking that. That is a whole <laughs> problem by itself that we can talk about for half an hour. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the amount of like slut shaming and everything around yeah. like the blood whores in this. Yes. Like, every time it was like a physical cringe to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The way all of that is described and used is like really, really terrible also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. If I remember correctly, that also gets worse as the series goes on. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. We get more yeah. of like, yeah, we get more of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the uh, whole thing with the Maroi and the, the Dampier is like super, super apparent in the TV show adaptation because we had these literal scenes where it's like fight scene uh, and all of the Maroi with like the firepower are just standing there like... <laughs> and then the are trying to like punch a vampire. Uh, you know, it's not going to get them very far. And they just keep getting yeeted in these fight scenes, and, like, almost dying. And all of the Moroi are just standing there, like, and I'm like, this is going to make no sense. You're going to die anyways because you're about to get eaten by this like vampire or the Strigoi. Like, just use your powers. Maddie, it's use literally the giving the Winx Club as well, though. <laughs> like, why is that a trait in every single like y- young YA show at this point where it's like, <laughs> The people without the powers are the ones that are fighting at all times. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Fairly amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we also it sounds like they got a bit under the stick. They got all these nice powers, they don't have to do any work. Right. And they're and they're all they're all royalty, which is also like a weird thing too. Mm-hmm. Um, can we talk about how this is a vampire academy in Montana? Near <laughs> Missoula specifically, and it comes up in the second book as Missoula's the big town they go to nearby. Montana. Mm-hmm. That's where the vampire came. I did Where's forget Rashani that. From? I thought for sure that this was like probably, probably on Montana. The East Coast. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of space out there. See, this meant yeah. nothing to me. I don't know what the I don't know anything about the US. I didn't it's know just like a middle US of nowhere, which year makes year sense, I guess. It's <laughs> one of those like, you know, usually when you're having these like sort of schools, it's in like an established place that's like, you know, not oh, much you from Mi- Montana. <laughs> they take a Michigan to Idaho. From Michigan. Michigan. Uh huh. Okay. I thought it was on the East Coast, and then I was like a little thrown yeah. in there, like Montana. I was like, "That's a choice." Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. And then some of the other schools are in like, okay, like Berlin and whatever. And you're like, "Then why are we in Montana?" No, yeah. Why are we why in the exactly? Montana school? Why are we in Berlin? <laughs> yes. Yes. I would be so mad if I were in the Montana school and there was a Berlin school. I'd be like, yeah. "Are you serious?" Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Anything I mean, else about the plot or the world building? What plot? <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay, we, good, Connor. <laughs> we have not talked about that yet. Yeah. What plot? What yeah. plot in this book? Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell is going on? Uh, the answer is nothing. <laughs> it's just teenage dramatics, which is what continues mm-hmm. in the second book. Like, the second book starts mm-hmm. with something that is, like, technically interesting. Uh, like, the murder of a whole family. You know, casual. And then it's just like, oh... Um, we need to all go to the same like ski resort in Idaho to protect mm-hmm. each other. Like all of the more I should be in one spot because that makes sense. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and we're all going to go on this school trip basically uh-huh. to do yeah. that. But it's all yeah. just the the inner dramatics of the school. Like you're, she's just yeah. writing like basically. A she just moved story. the plot or like the setting. Yeah, she just is writing a boarding school story and wants them to be vampires and like occasionally do cool stuff. So what I'm assuming is that the beginning and the end of every book has the actual like plot bits and everything mm-hmm. in between is just drama. Yes. Yeah. The, the third book is where the plot really like, where a plot really starts to form. Manifest? Is the plot in the yeah. room with us right now? <laughs> 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 like it's <laughs> truly wild. Uh, I I... Knew it was like going slowly for me, but I um like was at the point where I was like, Jesus, is this going anywhere? And I realized I was on page 55 and all of that time <laughs> it had just 55 pages was just them getting to the school and being like, we're back in school. We're back in school now. Oh my God, we're back in school. We're back in school. We're back in school. It was 
55 pages. And then I was like, Jesus is never going to end. And I kept reading and I think I made it to page like 70 and they were still talking about getting back to school. 70 pages of them just having emotions about being back in school. And I was ready to absolutely lose it. I kept updating my discord and I was like, oh, I have five hours of audiobook left. I have five hours of audiobook, but time kept moving and I just never moved from five hours of audiobook left because mm -hmm. I kept stopping in anger and like walking away. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. I forgot how little happened in the first book. until mm -hmm. It's because I read the first three like very closely together. So I just remember the last thing that I read, which is book three, where there was like a twist that happens, which is very obvious. If you've read the first book, you know what's going to happen. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was funny watching it being like, oh, this actually did well, better as a movie than it did as a TV show, because that's why I have questions for you, Maddie, about the TV show, because I'm like, what do they do for 10 whole episodes? <laughs> they changed some things. Like, there's yeah, like, I think oh. they added stuff from later on, from what I've seen, from the little edits that I've seen on TikTok that I spent 15 minutes on <laughs> There were they a lot more like stuff later sequences books. and like yeah. attacks and whatnot. And somebody like gets changed into a Strigoi like uh, partway through the season. And it's like a character that you meet and know. So it's like a big like, oh my God, like someone got changed. And they show more of like the like training montage of it all. So there's like filler stuff in there. It takes a lot of the elements of the world and just like actually shows it to us. Mm -hmm. Versus this felt like it was focusing on a lot of the like wrong things right things, yeah. like you're it would be i don't know it would give me details i didn't really freaking care about like mm -hmm. oh my god every time we went to church she would get a clue and yes. then, <laughs> <laughs> but then she would leave church and kind of forget about the clue and she the same realization that rose had like 10 times mm -hmm. across this was that oh my god lissa can heal lissa can heal oh my god because lissa can heal and she had that same realization like 10 times 10 mm -hmm. times and then so when you get to the end and you realize that the whole thing is like lisa can heal and that's why somebody wants her it's like no freaking duh like yeah. you and maybe it's her one uncle one. that has a disease that like is apparently incurable like wow what a yep. stretch yeah. uh amazing <laughs> yeah I, I mean this is a cool thing like i love a religion in like fantasy and sci-fi because i think exploring that can be really interesting but they just took catholicism and like yeah. made it so that's like the vampires are really into being catholics and you're like literally why, why? <laughs> um, like this makes no sense um yeah especially because like typically speaking those are like very antithetical yeah so that mm -hmm. was and again it was all the, the part that i remember the most about the book was the mean girl stuff with the like the girl that's aaron's new girlfriend or whatever the mia like, girl mm -hmm. yeah and it was just like she was like i guess the draco of like the series where it's like you like she's more present than the villain ever is because she's mm -hmm. like the main almost antagonist in the day-to-day -day stuff and it's why just like she... that gross mean girl stuff why was she so infantilized yes she was one year younger she was basically yeah. an infant she yeah. was treated like a child and the way that it was kind of like she's a baby but she's like dating I don't know. It was very weird. It yeah. was very, very weird. She was like, I'm mad. You're stealing my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. And they're like, go shop at Baby Gap. And you're like, literally, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. And like, even that, I get that like people can be that way and like the whole, but the whole plot line of like teenage girls are catty is like my least favorite thing in the world when it comes to YA books. So having that mm -hmm. so in your face and I get it so at the time and whatever, but it's one of those like, why is she mad? at a girl who at the time when she came back didn't even want your boyfriend like i get that your boyfriend like still wants her but like it's one of those like why are you even doing this like th just again nonsensical and so and she hates yeah. just like everyone around so being like oh she charmed everyone and and like ro like rose up the ranks and you're like literally how she seems like the worst yes. so this makes mm -hmm. no sense and the they they the like way that they were like going after each other too was like targeted at their mental health and she like sleeps with two guys to so that they're yeah. lie about and then like Rose is like stooping to her level in a way that makes her even worse it's like this is our heroine uh -huh. and she's like doing the same thing that the villain is doing and so that was also very like confusing to me that she was like I don't know fighting in this way and I was like who am I supposed to be rooting for here because you both are the same like, mm -hmm. I, I don't understand, so. Mm -hmm. I, it reminds me of Mean Girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot. Um, and I do think, like, from, like, the trailers and stuff for the movie really played on the idea. Well, of, like, yeah, because it mean was girls, the same. Vampires. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was the same. And it is, it is Mean Girls. They lean a lot more into the teen stuff. They're like, 
they're vampires, but they're teenagers that are also fighting each other in the movie. Mm. I mean, that's what the book also is, where it's yeah. like that's just teens being teens, which again, like. I don't know. I, I, I highlighted a comment earlier where someone was like, hey, we can make all these arguments for this being written in 2007, but uh, Suzanne Collins literally wrote I know, and Suzanne Collins still has her problems, too. Like, the yes, book, but, objectively, quality is better, but there's still yes, issues in that series. But also, but my point with this part being, you can write teenagers who aren't completely fucking insufferable. Like, I get that some are, but, like, just writing teens is, like, so flat like that. Mm-hmm. It's just also, like, taking away from the complexity of the teenage experience, which is not just all this. Um, That's so thing too, because there are nuance than that. I mean, I don't, even from the perspective of writing like soapy teen drama, right? Like it doesn't have to be super nuanced, but what would ma- have made this like better soapy teen drama than to me, than what it was. And so one, I, you would need a time machine to go back and read this in 2007 because like, no, <laughs> like 30 year old woman, <laughs> I can't yeah. say no. I looked this up on Goodreads and so many of my mutuals have this rated four and five stars and not like back in 2007. A lot of people reread because of the Peacock and it was like 2019, oh. 2020, 2021. People were, my mutuals on Goodreads were giving this four and five stars. And I was like, besties. Not your mutuals. Your yes. Yes. I, I regret ever looking at it honestly but (laughs) really like apart from like reading it in the past where all of this like super problematic stuff didn't stand out I think that you needed some like a better character at the helm you needed some emotional entry point you needed Mm -hmm. some maybe like more soapiness more Mm -hmm. like I don't know dramatics uh throw in a freaking dance in there you know like uh they had parties or whatever but they were always like kind of interrupted it needed she wasn't allowed to be at any of them she wasn't even allowed to be anywhere. She yeah. was not authorized. So there was like the 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 scope of everything mm-hmm. felt really small. Uh, like mm-hmm. it was just always, I don't know. It, it didn't even do like the trashy soapy thing especially well. Uh, so yeah. I didn't need this to be the next great American novel. But it also just didn't work for me as like mm-hmm. a fun romp. I had no fun. Yes. There was no <laughs> yeah. romp. I mean, also, as you're talking about it, I'm like, with all of these sort of vampire royalty, give me Gossip Girl. Yeah. Like, I, literally, me, I literally was thinking, I want Gossip yes. Girl of vampires. Like, That's give me objectively bad, sort of like, they're not great people. They're sort mm-hmm. of awful. But, like, lean into that, because, of course, in this, we have Rose, like, being written as if she is great. Like, the, the author wants you to think, like, oh, my God, I love Rose so much. So, like, if you have, you know, like, the Blairs and the Serenas and the Chucks and whatever from Gossip Girl, they're all, like, not great people. And that's fun because they're all in the shit together. Like I'm even thinking you like when we watched the Wink Saga, which was also super terrible. I'm not saying, it's <laughs> uh, but uh, I like what? That. I would I would <laughs> prefer that to this. So I'm like thinking about that gossip girl. Yeah. What, what also was there? It was an ensemble cast. Mm-hmm. So you got a lot of different people doing their like little everyday things or whatnot. Where this was so rose focused that it didn't like. I oh god, she was so annoying. You never escaped her. There was never. Never any escape. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think you needed some other element here to like make this truly like a fun sort of like soapy vampire thing. Mm-hmm. I have a question, which yep. is might might be a concluding question, but for the group and Mari especially. And remember, I know these are all in the same category, but you do have to rank them. Okay. Vampire Academy, the selection by Kira. Cash, I knew you were going to ask because I wanted to bone, ask this. Bone season by Samantha Shannon. Ooh. What's the ranking? But they can't all be the same. They are all the same. I would but especially they, I would especially within the level. I would especially argue that the selection and Vampire Academy are the exact same. But I had more fun reading the selection than I did Vampire Academy. Because Vampire I Academy didn't. was mid. Selection They're both so bad. They're both They're bad, both but I finished so the selection trilogy together. I read I listened to all three of those back to back. I did give one so of the bad. selection books five stars. <laughs> So I did also give one of these books five stars. Hey, Jordan, they have to be ranked. Wild. <laughs> like uh, while while admitting that they're all garbage, but within the pile of shit, one is at the bottom and one is floating at the top of the garbage can. Okay, if you Where held a gun it? to my head and you yes, yes, yes. Hold the yeah. gun to your head. You have to reread in the trash can. If you had to reread one of these, I would prefer to reread the selection. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you read it. It was so much nothing. Yeah, that, yeah. no, that's valid. It, that's valid. I read, I read it, it like so fast. It was so much nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, valid. Then, that's valid. If the if the there was a second guy with a second gun to my head and he showed me <laughs> one more, 
<laughs> I think I would reread Vampire Academy and then The Bone Season. <laughs> Interesting. I think you're right. I, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I also do not want to reread any of them. I think there's been enough time from this election, but I do think my my feelings were the exact same Hang between on. the two of hating the character, nothing happening, but not wanting to be in her head, misogyny. Yeah. So not like it's girl. all like maybe maybe I would flip the Vampire Academy just because like vampires instead of like dating show. Sure, fair. Sure, okay. Sure, but fair. like but otherwise, yeah. And how is the both season by Samantha Shannon, who's legitimately a good author? Like she no. actually is. How is the quality objectively? I haven't. I haven't. Read At least the, the writing itself so was fine. Who's writing? Samantha Shannon. Like <laughs> the sentences were fine. <laughs> the sentences had down a structure the, and period. Down to the atomic <laughs> level. <laughs> like I they were atoms. <laughs> <laughs> they were things that existed i mean again that is our forever those are our three bottom of the barrel forever yeah. all time. that's how I'm we're gonna I was able to add to this i'm glad i was able to add to this yeah yeah, yeah. i did not yeah. read the uh bone season you saved yourself I a lot of saved that yourself. you would have hated I it i read it a long it. time ago and didn't like absolutely hate it but the worst part is that i, I was remember. like oh priory will be better sorry guys it's not <laughs> I never i never finished priory <laughs> Uh, yeah, bottom of the barrel for sure. Uh, Paige, you have the dubious honor of uh, having picked one of our <laughs> worst books. Well, I also was the one that suggested the selection. I love, I love suggesting these books because I know you're going to hate them and I know that's going to bring the conversation. That's why what I What do you feel them. about that's like true. this versus like Ice Planet Barbarians? Ice Planet was fun. It was like- I would rather fun. read Ice Planet. Okay. Like, if I someone would read Ice Planet, Planet. I think I okay. finish yeah. all of the Ice Planets, including the baby <laughs> books, or read the Vampire Academy. Baby books? I, I, I would read the Baby Books. Ice Planet. Read I'm not reading the Baby Books. No. I, I would read the Ice Planet Baby Books <laughs> before Academy. finishing the Vampire Academy. Academy. That's same. That's same <laughs> yep. for me. Yep. Uh, yep. Same for me. I'd rather read them all. Um, be, again, I don't. I don't think I. I don't know if I've emphasized enough during the stream. So I want to emphasize <laughs> to you all that I was in physical pain reading this. <laughs> <laughs> the book with the breeding kink isn't going to be any better. Uh, the what? The breeding kink? I uh, Planet? You know, I can I can vibe with that, I think, more than yeah, this. Okay. I feel yeah. like Ice Planet knows more nope. what, what, what it is. is. It's, yeah. it's self-aware. Yeah, There's it's, a self-awareness self there. Self-aware. Yes. 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 And I know more to. of what Ice Planet is <laughs> doing. Uh, <laughs> okay. What is Rochelle Mead doing? Is Rochelle Mead still writing? She sure is? I don't know. No. Mm -hmm. I looked it up earlier. What? What is she? What is she writing? It's like it's like off-brand, probably self-published or whatever, but it's still like romancy, vampire-y books. But I think for adults. Yeah, she has a but lot of adults. The covers are god awful. God awful. Like worse than the Vampire Academy covers, Damn which it. are also. I'm, am mad. I going to read one of these the... now? Like as a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. She's written a children's novel. Oh god. For Doctor Who. Mm. Mm -mm. I, I forgot like about the glittering court situation. Yep. Yeah. I did read the oh, glittering court. You brought that up, and I was like, "Wait a minute! I have read that. I don't have a single memory about it, but I did read." That was the big book around channel. BEA that came out. In, yeah, for BEA. Yeah. I read it when it first started yeah. my channel. Mm -hmm. Rochelle Mead had her moment on BookTube for sure. She did. Those she books did. were like around, around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I met right. her at BEA. You met her at BEA. How'd that go? I did. She is very awkward. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Yes, you know? it was a very awkward interaction. Uh, I am also very awkward, so it just, it was bad. It was all bad. Yeah. That doesn't Okay, spell. we were booktubers on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. We're not now. Well, <laughs> Some of us aren't. <laughs> um, all right. So, will you continue this reread for those of you who reread? Will you continue reading in the series? I tried. You tried? I, try, I mean, I tried to read, read a second book because people were like, it gets better. I am not suffering like that. Mm. I can't get that much better. And also, I stand by, so yes, traditionally, um, urban fantasy, which it just technically is, um, the first book's always kind of garbage, and then the next books get, like, exponentially better. I would have had to see, like, marked improvement in the second book, and there is none. So for people to be like, wait till after book three, and then it gets really good, I am not reading half of a series for it to start getting good. And I'm very questionable on what good is in this case. So, yeah, no. Yeah. I might. Just I don't think curious. you would like it. Yeah. 
I might be curious and I own all of them, but we'll see if I actually end up getting around to it. Do you want to? And like, do you want to keep on with the reread? I might. Um, it's just because like I'm reading all the unread books on my shelf, so it wouldn't be until next year anyway. And then by then, will I actually really want to be doing sure. this? We sure. will see. Yeah, a project. Yeah, Jordan. it could be a project. I mean, I'm probably not going to continue with it right now, but I won't say that like I would never go back and reread it like mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. Sure. Speak your but- truth. You're among friends. <laughs> and the, and the entire internet. But also, like, I read half of this book and the whole thing came back to me, so I don't think it would be satisfying to reread it because I, it, like, I remember everything that happened. Yeah. Sure. So it wouldn't be fun. Because, again, two things happen per book. It, per book, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not one of those series where, like, each time you read it, you, like, find new things mm-hmm. to talk about. It's yeah, the same no, no. thing every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I will not. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I messaged in the group chat that I thought Paige was mad at us. <laughs> she was playing no, the long truly, game. I did not remember out. how bad. I didn't remember anything about the series truly when I like recommended that we read this. This was me going in blind as well. So great. I think I think I was like one of the first people to finish, and I was like, this was not good. <laughs> Zoinks. <Yeah>. Zoinks. <laughs> All right. Anybody change their rating? No, I'm gonna stick with still two. a one. Yeah. Bold, bold choice. Bold choice, <laughs> right? Bold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've read it twice now, so I can't give it a one. You could. Bold twice. No, I, I, I read I the, it. the selection twice, and both times it was a one. So oh, I think no, I didn't even give that a one. <laughs> I'm trying to think of things that like I actually did like, and I'm like having a hard time. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> what, so I might drop it. We're like coming up to the end, but. Does anyone have something nice to say about this? <laughs> <laughs> well, just Christian, right? Christian, that's a Christian, Christian with our one nice thing. The best. I will say my one nice thing that I said to the Discord was that I appreciated that this was just over 300 pages. Yes, I feel short. like the equivalent of this book in 2023, like Fourth Wing, adds at least 100 pages to that, sometimes yeah. 200 pages to that. So there is something really satisfying about the fact that it was like it knew it didn't have enough to fill out any more. 330 something pages was actually kind of pushing it, um, mm-hmm. but it read very quickly. So there is that. Yeah. Even though you were stuck on hour five of the audiobook. Yeah, yeah. But I kept walking. Days. That was my fault because I kept walking away. <laughs> I kept going, no, and walking away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That I think is it for the Vampire Academy, which brings us to picking our um, next three book club picks and so let me just say pay you pay like no Wait, more no, no chaotic choices for the rest of the year <laughs> this was your one chaotic choice she says she has Don't nothing but anymore. chaotic I, i'm like I, nothing else. Okay. I like the chaos it's fun <laughs> no i don't I want a every good other, one. Every other quarter we get. I'll give you. Okay. Yes. If I get picked twice, the second one's going to be a chaos choice. But if I only get picked Girl, twice, no. I'll only give you a good choice. <laughs> Start praying to Jesus right now. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. So we do this every quarter. We just pick three of uh, our names, and whoever gets picked gets to pick <laughs> the book for. So it's it, pick it's three. One, pick and then you put it back one, in. And then shake it back yeah, up. Yeah, you know, pick one, yeah, okay. and then I put it back. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Some, like the same person could get picked three times. Three times. Yes, because I pick. Let, let, let it be my season. Who, who has my not been season. Picked, <laughs> Besides myself, who has not been picked? I think just, only you. Only you, I think. Just you. Yeah. I <laughs> I Mine told Tony, kind of I was like, I'm pretty, pretty sure that they don't have my name in there. No, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's six pieces of paper. I checked them all before we started. Okay. Uh-huh. And Madi has two. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, this is for July. And our lucky person is Jordan. Yay. Oh, no. <laughs> I should have checked to see if anybody read this. If anybody read this, let me know, and I'll think of something else. All right. Someone's so read it. it. It depends on the book, yeah. and it might be fine. Okay. So I am going to pick, we've read a book from this author before, from a different okay. year. Oh, so if I you, know it's going to be. Uh, no, you do? Let her, let her say it. Taylor Jenkins Reid? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, read oh, one? I've already read that one, but we can discuss it. I have I'll not. It. Okay. What is it? Carrie's song? Carrie Soto, 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 Soto is back. back. 
I controversial thought, choice. Interesting. Like the interesting, only one that's running. Okay. I also yeah. I, I'm very curious hard. about your thoughts of the audio yes. specifically because I have thoughts about the audio books, but anyway. Ooh. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Jordan went back in the pile. Mm -hmm. This is for. Let's, let's get a triple Jordan. No, I don't have any more options. <laughs> <laughs> I picked two. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, with this one. Let's see. We have who could this be? They're like, oh, Kayla. Happy place. Happy place. Happy uh -huh. place. Was oh, the way I've already read two of these books. This is thriving. <laughs> <laughs> thriving. Come on, everybody no manifest Connor. <laughs> Connor, Connor, Connor. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to put them all in my little palm here. Shake them up. And we've got... I, I keep feeling like I'm picking the same ones over and over. <laughs> okay. If that's the way that God wants it. You know, yeah. that's, true. that's true. And then we've got... Connor! Oh, <laughs> my list. I want to read uh, Dragonfall by L.R. Lamb. Nice. Oh, by what is it? L.R. Lamb. R. Lamb. Is this middle grade? No. She's uh, actually read two books by her. Hello. Dragonfall. I read these by her and, and really enjoyed both of them. So. Uh. I want to read more. Interessante. Interessante. What a selection we have. We um, sure do. Like contemporary ish fiction. It's 90s set. Uh, uh, yeah. Contemporary romance, fantasy. Uh huh. <laughs> for, and for summer, you know, July and August, that's some light reading yes. for summer. Mm -hmm. That's cute. I like that. Also, Bless Kayla for picking Happy Place during my birthday month. I just feel like I was gonna say you picked my name during yeah. my birthday month, so thank you for oh, that. That was all the universe, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, amazing. All right, um, as always, we will be pretty chaotic about planning these live shows, <laughs> uh -huh. but we will do our best to let you guys know via Twitter and all of that when these will be. We aim for the end of the month, uh, so stay tuned for all of that and we hope that you guys will read along with us and join us next month for carrie soto is back mm -hmm. all right good night all right thanks bye, bye.